grace, power, ministry, and love. Incline your ears to wisdom and your hearts to understanding. Receive the word of God according to knowledge. Welcome to preach. To preach. To preach. Be a voice, not an echo. Join Minister Chantrell for today's message. Now, good afternoon, beloved. I am Ambassador Chantrell Davis, and this is Preach, Be a Voice, Not an Echo. And yes, it is still September 19th of 2017. It is 1.34 p.m. I'm going to get right on this. Because this is a testimony. This is a testimony because a right word in due season, how good it is, the Lord tells us. And this is going to be a good testimony. I'm going to record a couple of them today because I've recorded um, quite a few dreams today, uh, a few messages, and a few let us reason together uh, forms of information um, that I really think we need to come together on because all of, you're going to know why I'm pulling all this together because of the time we live in. You're going to have to be prepared for the things we're going to face. There's going to be great deception, not from just things that's coming from the sky and these Nephilim and these fallen angels and these demons and false doctrine and uh, truth that's being twisted. People led away, um, redirecting their attention from what they should have it redirected on. It's going to be so much. And that's why all of this, and I'm going to give this testimony. I, well, no, I never gave this testimony. It's the one I'm going to do after this. I'm going to get right into this. I'm going to read a scripture and then I'm going to tell you why I'm reading this scripture. Um, and I really don't care. This testimony need to be sure because you need to be aware. It's okay to know who you are, but our focus is still Christ. Okay. This particular testimony is, I'm going to give you, well, I'm going to read you the scripture. Then I'm going to give you the testimony name. And I entitled this heading of this scripture zeal, but not according to knowledge establishing their own righteousness. I'm going to read Romans 10, 1 through 4. Brethren, pay very close attention to what I'm saying. You're going to know why. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Okay? For I bear them record that they have zeal of God but not according to knowledge. For they, they being ignorant, ignorant of God's righteousness and going out to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believe it. I'm going to follow this up. If being a part of a tribe is automatic salvation, why is his prayer that they might be saved? I'm going to stop there just for a second. Zeal, but not according to knowledge. And I'm going to read another one right quick. Puffed by knowledge. 1 Corinthians 8, 1 through 2. Now as touching things offered unto idols, you know he was talking about a lot of stuff, but I like to read the beginning and the end. But verse 2 is what I'm really focusing in on. We know that we will have, we all have knowledge, but knowledge puffeth but up, but charity edifieth. And if a man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing. Yet as he ought to. So if you think you know something, you know nothing as you ought to. Not yet. Let me get back to the point of this. My testimony, the title of this is, My Assignment and Season in the Israelite Church. Israelite, Hebrew Israelite. Their ancient error. Okay? I'm going to give the testimony of a season in my life where I got led into the Hebrew Israelites. It was only about three and a half to four months. Definitely was not longer than that. And by the end of this, you're going to see why I say it was an assignment. And then I'm going to elaborate further on the scripture that the Lord gave. For those of you, it is okay to know who you are because the enemy operates that way. He sent people out 
who they're teaching some truth. They're teaching some stuff that is true and have redirected. Basically, they got knowledge without the Holy Spirit of God, which is why there's so much perversion. I don't have to argue what they teach. I sat in there and I heard what they taught. I didn't realize it was an assignment until I sat there and the Lord made it clear. That's why I clearly say it was an assignment because he needed me to see what I saw because it changed the way I studied forever. Let me begin this testimony and I'm going to go more off into scripture. Excuse my animation because sometimes when you give testimony, your mind just go back there because y'all have no idea how slick the enemy is. And I'm going to tell you what the word, the Lord said to me that I still didn't really have understanding on just how deep or just what he meant until literally a few weeks ago. Even though I know he showed me deception, I had no clue on what he really meant until a few weeks ago, okay? Oh, I'm going to say December 2007 in the summertime. Anyone who don't know my story ain't read my book, Woman Submit Under Man's Mission, Not Under His Feet, that's about to be relaunched. It is a very graphic, and I say graphic when I have to give disclaimer for certain parts because it is graphic of the abuse, sexual rape, caged in the house, tormented down that I suffered for a season in abuse. Fresh out of that, but knew the Lord, well, God was with me because he, I got so many testimonies I gave on it from the spiritual things that happened and visitation of angel. He was with me even in the turmoil, um, that it was allowed for my building up. He didn't cause it, but he used every bit of it to build me up. I'm back and I'm looking for a church to get involved in because we know how good it is for, for uh, brethren to dwell together in unity is like all running, all off, running off Aaron's build, bird. We already know it's good. I'm in a flea market. Anybody know what a flea market is? A swamp meat. People call them different things. We call them flea market, swamp meats, whatever in Oklahoma, because that's where I'm from and that's where I was residing at the time. I'm scrolling past, looking for stuff to, you know, looking for deals. And a gentleman, I, I would say, I'm not going to say his name, but I really don't remember his name anymore. <laughs> because anyone who knows anything about the Hebrew Israelites, they don't use regular names. Okay. I had never even heard of a Hebrew Israelite. So I'm walking and I'm just beginning to really study the Bible because even the abuse I suffered caused me to study deeper, but I still didn't know just how deep I needed to study. Okay. And I'm walking by and he's like, Hey, selling this, you know, scarves, cologne and all that. And I'm gonna tell y'all again, watch some of them colognes and stuff. Y'all be buying from people on the thing, incantations and spells and curses. Don't just be buying no oils from people on the street. They become hither oils and come get me oils and come get it oils. That's just a little note for you real quick. Watch buying them oils on the street. People will spells. Okay. Um, as I was walking by, he ho he hollers out because he's trying to get his stuff sold. I can respect that. People get their hustle on. They got business. They need to let you know they there. So the first thing he tries to do is start to throw scripture at me. You know, oh, make up some conversation while I'm looking at his stuff. Oh, scripture this. And me, I'm throwing the word right on back at him. He threw something else. I threw the, but the words say this, you know. Little did I know that was the beginning because they're testing, okay? And she going to eat what I'm giving her, but I could always come back with a scripture that said, no, read on down, it says this. And then he was like, oh, okay. You you study. Uh, yeah, I do. And still had no idea how hard I was going to have to study, okay? He means study. He just said, read the Bible, study to show yourself approved. And so he said, well, won't you come, you know, to our church meeting? You know me, I, I'm looking for a church. And I was like, you know what? I just might do that. And we talked for a little while about some stuff. And he was a nice young man. I, I cannot deny. Nice, very gentleman-like. He was just pushing what he pushed, come to our church and, you know, see what we offer. So, <laughs> oh, this gets funny. <laughs> so, after about a week or two, I didn't go the first week. It was about two weeks before I called him. And he gave me the address. And I showed up. Oh, God. I go in. And it's a few young ladies there and a few men. And I noticed the young men are sitting on this side and the women are sitting on this side. I'm thinking, okay, this is how they do. And so I go sit down, dressed normal, casual, hair down. And, you know, ladylike, I didn't have issues with dressing then. Wait till y'all get some testimony, bro. Boy, I got some testimony on that, boy. And um, I sat down and a young man, very polite though. They were always very polite. I got to give you that much. 
because they trying to sell you. The enemy don't come, hey, no, he comes sweet. He comes slick. He comes smooth. So I'm sitting there and a, a, a gentleman comes over. He got his little thing tied on his head and all that. And you know me. I, I'm not one of them that's boxed in. I'm open to different cultures. You go all over the world, people dress different, they act different, they dance different. That's just me. Diversity does not bother me. So I don't judge somebody because they got a scarf on their head. Okay? And so he comes over to me and he offers me a scarf. I looked at him. I said, uh, you know, that I need to cover my head. I said, uh, no. I said, I'm just here to observe. I ain't going to be none of that scarf on my head stuff, y'all. No, sir. And he walks off. He didn't force me. He didn't get rude. And I promise you, just as clear as I know the Lord's voice now, the Lord said, you're going to put that scarf on your head. You need to call him back. I heard the Lord. And let me tell you why. I'm going to try to stay on course because I want to get this testimony that people think covering up their head is the authority. Because in, in Psalms, Lord, this scripture is coming to me now that uh, the Lord is cursing those who uh, that move and they operate under a covering that is not a covering of his spirit. This is speaking about authority, not a physical covering over a woman's head. But let me stop there. And the Lord told me to call him back and you're going to put that on your head. Because what y'all need to understand is that the Lord honors authority no matter where you are. So if you wanted them to think you called to rebel and go up and correct your head, you are, that's the lie and the truth is not in you. The Lord does not make you correct upward. You're going to sit there and be submitted and you're going to learn. And if it is somewhere the Lord tells you not to be, he's going to tell you to leave, which is what we're getting to. He, the, the, the Lord honors authority no matter what, even so much so that the scripture says that even if a woman is under oath, if she's under the authority of her father, she can be broken from that oath because he's going to honor the authority first. Let me get back to this testimony. So I called him back over there and I said, I apologize. I said, could you give me a scarf and let me cover my head? At that point, I knew I was on assignment. 100% sure I was there to see and hear something because the Lord said you need to be here. So as days go by. I'm listening to all these different scriptures. You know, I ain't never heard nobody teach like this. I mean, they going and expounding on the words. And a, a guy standing there reading just as bold as can be. Reading from the word. And one guy would ask a question and they'd flip. And they'd flip and expound. And uh, I don't know, forgive me if I got this wrong, because I'll be trying to be disrespectful. I don't know if they called him the grand priest or whatever it was. The guy who came out to teach the word. He would say, read. This guy would start reading, stop. And he expound. And I mean, no matter what question you ask, they could go to it in the scripture. I want y'all to pay attention. Let me tell you what the Lord allowed first. I'm sitting there looking at how they expound and they showing me stuff. Then they start adding a little of that perversion about they use Negro and nigger and this and this. And I'm sitting there looking and then they go to the scripture. See, I'm not going to go through all that. I'll be digging forever to find half that stuff. And I'm sitting there with my mouth hanging open like, what? That's in the Bible. And I'm sitting here like, what? The Lord let that happen for a whole week, just that one time, the second time I went, because he wanted me to see just how quick they could pull you in. He wanted me to see that when you stop where they tell you to stop and then they expound, you have then went from his word to their word. So they would show you a scripture where it shows a little bit of what they just said. Stop. And then he would start to expound. So you would stop and would only see what they wanted you to see. And they would expound further. So at that point, they were feeding you their word. It was no longer his word. That's the first thing the Lord said. He said, now stop. When they would stop, he let me see that. Then the second or third week I went, they would do it and say, take you to the word where it said they were called Niger first and some. Stop. And they would start to expound. It was no longer the word. They were expounded out of their mouth. But the Lord would talk to me and say, no, go further down. And so while they teach, I'm doing this. And they do it again. Stop. Flip her. And then all of a sudden, one eyebrow was like this. I'm sitting there like this with one eyebrow in there. You know why they still preaching. I'm already looking half cocked because now they're saying this because the first week he let me get drawn in like everybody else. Now he said that, that, that he spoke to me that once they have you see only what they want you to see, they tell you to stop and they start to expound. So you're receiving that word, not this word. That's where the trickery lied in. 
Then the weeks falling, he said, stop. The Lord was spirit. When they were saying stop and they were reading what they were reading, the Lord would tell me, go her, go her, read further down, go her. And then all of a sudden my eyebrow going up in the air. Okay. That's just the beginning of it. So as this is happening, because you only go once a week and mind you that if you a woman and you get your flower, you can't come in the sanctuary for that week because you filthy. How many know that ain't biblical no more? That was the law. We are under grace. But when your girl at time was on, you couldn't come to the sanctuary because you were tainted in every seat you sat on. You know what? If they really was going to fulfill the law, everything she touched would become filthy, which means even the chairs that she sat in would be filthy. So I don't know if they sanctified the chairs or if they cleaned the chairs, because if you read the scripture, if we're going to go by the law, and that means everything she touched, the bed, the seats, the scarves become dirty. And if she touched you, you dirty too. But that was during the period. We grown. We're not going to act like we don't know what women get every month. But you couldn't come into the sanctuary because you were dirty and you were contaminate everything. So, okay. So I'm sitting there when I come back in a couple weeks later. And you know, you notice young men coming in with their they wives. But women always sat over here and men sat over there. Always. We were on the right side. They were over on the left. So after that, I start to look up and I, I notice because I say, hi, I'm kind. And I see a man come in, and the woman he comes in with ain't the woman he was with the other week. So I'm like, that ain't his wife. Okay. They sitting over there. Then I see it again. That ain't the woman he was with the other day. Then I see the women sitting over there together. Okay. And anybody that know me, no, I don't play with that. And so I'm looking, okay, he brought her in separate, her in separate. I don't know, maybe one of his other wives was on girly time that month. I don't know. But then all of a sudden, they all sitting over there. And I'm thinking, what the mess is going on here? Meanwhile, all this perversion and hate is being taught. I don't need no argument because I'm not trying to combat you. I don't care. My eyes is on Christ. But they taught hate. They taught that no one could enter. No white Caucasian person can be saved. Nobody but the tribes of Israel and Judah can be saved, and that is a lie from the pit of hell. The enemy was using truth. Because I know people don't want to believe Judah's still loose over here. They are. But that's how the enemy get people. They make it about a bloodline rather than the blood of Jesus. That's contrary. Meanwhile, this is going on. I'm watching all these women come in, and they had some of the people, little did I know, whoever brought you in was prime for you to be one of their wives, okay? <laughs> How I learned this. They call a checkup on you to see if you have any questions or stuff like that. And so one night, I'm getting checked up on by the individual who invited me, and I said, no, I didn't have any questions, and it is, and, you know, because me, I just sit there and observe, because I ain't going to have it no matter what. I don't care. I don't know what y'all got going on. That ain't going to go down over here. But I, I, one thing I've learned that anything you stay in long enough will consume you. Evil communication will corrupt good manners. So no matter how I felt, anybody that stays in that long enough will conform. Don't you ever deceive yourself. But mind you, I was there on assignment, and I say that with great boldness. And as he was speaking about this, I said, yeah, I don't know how we got on the subject about the wives. And he said, yeah, you know, and went to every scripture that showed uh, David had more than one wife, concubines, Moses. They went to every scripture that showed anybody that had more than one wife. And so I'm on other than the phone like this, like, and I'm thinking, well, how that work? Basically, the guy that brings you in, apparently, if it's going to go down like that, you'll be his wife. And I'm thinking, well, I said to him, well, I said, well, you invited me. He's like, yeah. And, you know, and he's explaining to me how it works. And he, then this is what he says. I don't care who got a problem with it. You know, you'd be my favorite. What? Favorite? I, one thing, you know, let me tell you about Chartrell Davis. Because I, I don't practice nothing. I don't preach and I don't give when it comes to being faithful to my husband. One mind, one heart. One line, of, another man can't do nothing but show me which way my husband went. I ain't competing with a dream, a memory, a thought, nothing. Let alone show you. 
I ain't going to compete if your mind is still there. You got to go. That's what it is. And then what the Lord said, if you if you cheating in your heart, you've already committed adultery. Well, that's what the Lord says. That's what I say. If your mind is on that person, you've already committed adultery. I ain't having it. Back to the testimony. And so I'm thinking, no, I told him there ain't going to be none of that. There ain't none of that. And he kind of laughed it off. So we go back in. I'm still listening to this hate that they Edomites. Now, keep in mind, Edom, Rome, and Edomites, that's biblical. You can pull it up all day in the Bible. There are Edomites. There are Edom. It is Rome. But they're saying everybody are descendants of them who are Caucasian or white or any pale persuasion at all, and that there is no salvation available for them. This is what they teach, that no one can be saved. Only the tribe of Judah can be saved. And I want that to stick in your mind when I go down here to the scripture, that nobody can be saved but the tribes, but yet tribes and Israel. And so why is Paul praying that all of Israel might be saved? Let me go back to the testimony. So as I'm sitting here and I'm listening to them teach this hate, I'm looking at the multiple wives. I'm looking at all this stuff. And I'm one eyebrows in the earth. And one day I was sitting there. And soon as the, I don't know if I'm getting this right, the grand priestess or whatever they call them comes out to teach. Excuse me, because you ain't supposed to move and do nothing. He sits there. And the Lord tells me, I heard him clear as day. As they were teaching before, he would always say lie. Go down, pay attention. There's go to this scripture. See where they left it out? Okay. As soon as I was sitting up prepared again, I heard him as clear as day. Get up and leave and don't come back. I politely, quietly got my bags, let it scarf off my head, walked out the door, and never went back. And when I got outside that door, the Lord said, Excuse me. I'm going to pause this. Good Lord. When I got outside that door, the Lord said, this is how hard evil is working to deceive. When I tell you it was studying like I had never seen before, it was expounding on the scriptures like I had never seen before. Although there was trickery and anyone not having the spirit and surrender to the spirit. And I'm mind. I want you to mind. I had been physically baptized with the Holy Spirit yet. And he was instructing me. For those of y'all that think he don't instruct people until he get baptized, that's not true. He has lordship over you when he comes in and baptized. He's inhabited you. He has lordship over your life. You are totally going where the where the he go. He said, as many as are led by the spirit, they have the power to become the sons of God. He said, this is how hard evil is working to deceive. And I had no idea just how much until now. Even then, it changed the way I studied in every way. Because I learned books to study in. I learned concordances to get. All that I learned from being there, they are still good tools that I, my whole level of study had to change. But they were teaching nobody could get salvation unless you were of the 12 tribes of Israel, unless you were Israel or Judah. And that is a lie. I'm going to go to scripture right now, okay? Bear with me. Because y'all don't need to fall into this. Now, I'm not saying what they're teaching about Judah is untrue. I can't let that go. The Lord has shown me some things. Judah is still scattered, Okay. But it is not about Judah. It's about Jesus. Because even Judah can't be saved without Jesus. It's the very thing that happened then is that they were so puffed up on who they were, they could not even receive salvation. Because there is only way, one way into salvation because the law was a shadow of the things that come. The substance is her, which is Jesus. And no man, no matter what tribe you are of, will, be, will go into eternity without Jesus. And his lordship. Let me go to the scripture here. Back to 1 Corinthians 8, 1 through 12. Now touching things, oh well, we are saw knowledge puffed up, but charity edifies. God is no respecter of persons. Act 10, 34 through 38. And then I'm going to go 44 through 48. Let's read verse 34. Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. But every nation, every nation... Is that just Judah? Is that just the 12 tribes of Israel? Because we know that all those who say they're Israel, not of Israel. He means the seed of Israel. Excuse me. No respect of a person. He said every nation, he that feareth him 
and work his righteousness is accepted of him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel preaching peace by Jesus. He is Lord of all. That word I say ye know, which we, we published throughout Judea and begun in Galilee after the, after the baptism which John preached. That's the baptism of repentance. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. He had to get the Holy Ghost first. With power who went out about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. You know, he just say uh, diabetes, cancer, all who were oppressed of the devil, seizures, epilepsy, all who were oppressed of the devils. All this, all illnesses are not earthly; they are demonic. I'm not saying every disease, but I, I would say at least 95 percent of them. And you can see it all through the Bible if you just read. Let's read Acts uh, 10, verse 44 through 48. <clears throat> this is the whosoever will. While Peter yet spake, while he yet spake, these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. Faith comes by hearing the word. Salvation is of faith. And they of the circumcision which believe were astonished. They of the circumcision which believe. Who were the circumcision? The children of Abraham. The tribes. Okay? Those who say they're the tribe. They were astonished. They were the circumcision who believed. So that tells you that even those who are of the tribe had to believe. Pay attention again. <clears throat> and they of the circumcision, circumcision who believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because that the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak in tongues and magnify God. Then Peter answered. Then Peter answered, can any man forbid, can any man forbid, Hebrew Israelites, can y'all forbid water that these should be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord, then prayed they him to tarry certain days. They said those of the circumcision, them was the tribes who believed, which means you, even if you of the tribe, you got to believe in Jesus. And that salvation is through faith and not of works anymore. The Holy Ghost, the earnest of the purchased possession. Ephesians 1 through 13, 1, 13 through 14. In whom we also trusted after that she heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after you believe, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. After you believe. Excuse me. Which was the earnest of our inheritance unto redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. The Holy Spirit is the promise. I'm coming back to get you. Just like you put down payment on the house. I'm buying this house. The Holy Spirit is the earnest. I'm coming back to get you. You are redeemed. You are purchased. And I'm coming back to get my house. Only the house will be transformed. The Holy Spirit promised he is coming back for his purchased possession. And the tongues is evidence that he has taken up residence in you. It is by faith you have salvation. The Holy Spirit is proof he has come up in you, but you got to believe. Notes, grace nuggets. God is no respecter of persons. Every tongue and every nation shall confess. So that, that, that just blows up the fact that only Judah and only uh, the, the Israel and Abraham, tribes, true tribes of Israel can be saved. They call them, I sat in there, they call them white devils. And I want to say there's black devils, there are white devils, there are Asian devils, there are Russian devils. There are some hateful people that have yielded from every tongue and every tribe and every nation. And likewise, there are Asians who worship. There are uh, Russians who worship. There are blacks who worship. There are whites who worship in spirit and truth. And every tongue and every nation, there is someone who praises and moves forth in faith. And they are acceptable. And are accepted into the beloved. That no flesh can glory. Like Paul said. If I was going to brag. I'm from the tribe of Benjamin. Circumcised the eighth day. It's nothing. He has to have faith. He said but if I was to glory in flesh. None of y'all would be able to glory like me. But he said I speak as a fool. He said I speak as a fool. And anybody else who's saying that the flesh. The color. The tribe. They speaking as a fool. 
It is not based upon a natural bloodline, but it is based upon the spiritual reborn bloodline that is Christ Jesus, who is our Lord. Every tribe, every tongue, every nation. That's why he said tribe, tongue, and nation. The nations were the Gentiles. Hello. Cornelius, the centurion, the nations, the Gentiles, saved by grace through faith, lest any man should boast. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 3, 2 through 6. You are, ye are our epistles, written in our hearts, known, seen, and read of men. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministering by us, written not with ink, but in the spirit of living God, not on tables of stone, the law, but fleshy tables of the heart and such trust we have and trust such trust we have through Christ to Godward. Not that we are sufficient in ourselves to think that we are anything in and of ourselves. Glory and in the flesh. That's what they did in the beginning. They would not even receive Jesus. They did not even accept these tribes. They did not receive him. He went to his own first and they did not receive him. Salvation went unto the Gentiles. Because everyone who receives Jesus, that's why you go back to the scripture of the believing of the circumcision with, with Peter. They had to believe. The ones who did not believe were not. And they were of the tribes. Let's read verse 6. Who also had made us able ministers of the New Testament. This is Paul. Of the tribes. Not of the letter, not of the law, but the spirit. But of the spirit. For the letter killeth. But the spirit give it life. The letter kills. People are going to die. Try to proclaim genealogies. He said avoid vain arguments of genealogies. Are, it, it genders to strife. We preach Christ and him crucified. I don't care what tribe you're from. And I will say boldly, oh, Christ still has a people. He never disannulled that. But that's not what you preach. You preach Christ. Him crucified, and that he died for all, for every tongue, every tribe, and every nation to be able to serve him and worship him in the spirit and in truth. Grace Nugget. The law, which was a shadow of the substance, now that which is substance has come, who is Jesus, our Sabbath, Jesus, our Passover, Jesus, our Jubilee, Ju Jesus, our glory, Jesus, our justification, Jesus, our salvation, and our Lord. Of glory. Every tribe, every tongue, every nation. No, not just Judah. No, not just Israel. So to be told that you can't be saved, it is only for the 12 tribes, it's only for Judah, is a lie from the pit of hell. The truth is not in you. You have zeal, but not according to the knowledge. You have received knowledge that you are a tribe, but you are puffed up. It is not by the Spirit. Galatians 3:28. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ. And those who are in Christ live with everlasting burnings. And what you're missing is the Holy Spirit of God, which is why a person can take being a tribe and exalt themselves above people. And it is the very thing the 12 tribes did in the beginning that caused them to fall. Jesus came for all. He took away you being able to glory in your flesh. He took away you being able to glory in your genealogy. Genealogy. That you will only glory in Christ. If you boast, it's going to only be in the Lord and all he did. He took that away. Breaking down a wall of partition. The everlasting burners of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit would lead and guide you in all truth. But when you just have knowledge without the Holy Spirit, what do you get? A crash course of stupidity. The everlasting burnings of the Holy Spirit purifies our motives. It burns up our own acts. It burns up our own flesh uh, uh, works. It burns up our own flesh. Isaiah 4 and 4. When the Lord has washed away the moral filth of the daughters of Zion and has cleansed the blood stains of Jerusalem from her, from her midst by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. I'm going to read that in King James. It was amplified. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst of thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. That spirit of burning is the Holy Spirit. 
When you get someone who finds knowledge, and I'm not saying everything they, they teach in this era, but they are teaching error. Now let me tell you what the Lord meant by this is how hard evil is working to deceive. Because some of what they say is true. The tribes have not been gathered back together. I don't care what nobody say. I'm going to stand on that. But their era is the same ancient era of the Israel tribes of old. They made it about their genealogy. They made it about their blood. They made it about their tribe. They made it about Father Abraham. When Abraham, that was a shadow of the substance, which is Jesus. They were never meant to dwell in that state. That's the ancient era. That they think they will be justified by their flesh, justified by the law, justified by their works, rather than by the salvation and the bloodshed of Jesus Christ. That's the ancient era of the Hebrew Israelites. You can be Judah, but you will be Judah in hell if you don't surrender your life to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through faith, by grace, not of works. You will burn in hell like anybody else. I don't care what your tribe is. That's the end of my testimony. That's all the Lord would have me deliver today. It is never by the tribe or by your skin or by works of even the law or of flesh. It is only by grace through faith and total trust in his salvation that you will enter the kingdom. Y'all take this testimony and this word before the Lord. This is true. That was my time. And the Lord taught me that the enemy sent forth this radicalism because some of what they're saying is true. But they're so radical and full of hate that no one will receive any word of it. That's another trick of the enemy. I want y'all to take that. Error and hate, it is never God. He hate ways. He hate acts. Acts of people. He hate idolatry. But we're dealing with the spirit behind it. And it is a spirit of ancient error and of hate. Take this testimony before the Lord. I pray it blesses you. Don't get caught up. His name is Jesus. I told you what he said to me. He said, I speak every language. Jesus is the name they want to shut up. So keep calling it out and you will be saved. Grace be with you and I love you all. Minister Davis, my testimony and my season of learning in the Hebrew Israelite church. Open your eyes. Thank you for joining us today on Preach, Be a Voice, Not an Echo. We pray that you were encouraged and empowered by today's message. Until next time, we encourage you to hang on to God's unchanging hand and preach. Grace be with you.